just bring us in with an intro and then just go yeah away. yeah because i don't have All anything right. good to say you don't have anything so you don't want to talk about your gaping asshole no no <laughs> not today at least <laughs> not today yeah. we'll save it for next once you get another <laughs> inch of diameter on there uh, yeah i can, talk about I can i'll watch the morbius movie too and then i can talk oh. about that and the morbius movie because they're in the same genre of of thinking so <laughs> gaping asshole <laughs> once i'm able to fit the morbius blu-ray in my asshole then i'm ready to talk about that masterpiece <laughs> once it's inside of me well i was mostly just talking about jared leto and how he's a gaping oh, asshole true he definitely is <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay welcome to the guts and ghouls podcast i'm dax and i'm brad and today we're talking about Norroy the Curse, uh, mm. which is a 2005 film directed by Koji Shira. Okay, hang on. Shiraishi. <laughs> I think I said that right. That, that sounded uh, right. Uh, and I didn't know this. I've been meaning to actually watch some of this guy's other stuff because um, he has some other movies that I'm familiar with, like Slit Faced Woman uh, and stuff like that. But he actually directed uh, Sadako vs. Kayako. Which oh. was awesome. Which I haven't seen that yet, but I've heard uh, you talk about it. I I remember when we watched it, I was screaming out of like, not out of horror, but just out of pure joy. <laughs> it's it's just like, it's it's one of those movies where it knows it's dumb and just goes with it. Yeah. Because like, they literally capture um, uh, Sadako. They have her in this ghost bag that I guess can hold spirits. Or no, they capture Kayako. So they capture Kayako and they have her in this bag and they're like, or was it Sadako? I don't know. Basically, they get both the ghosts and they have them contained and then they just go, let's make them fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally a line in the movie. He's like, let's make these schools fight. <laughs> I love it. I love so it. So they make Kayako watch the tape. So Sadako has to come oh, out and I kill see. her. I was wondering how yeah. that works. Okay. Yeah, that's literally how they did it. <laughs> it's awesome. So that they put a little bit of thought into how it would work, I guess. Yeah. But you okay. also had um, a magic man who would move his fingers and it like emitted, I guess, force and c- he could fight with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but uh one of my favorite like lines from it like the the girls that find like the tape in the beginning of the movie they like bring it to their like uh professor because i guess he like is into like that kind of stuff um and he's like oh i want to watch it they're like oh no don't you'll die in um two days and he just goes dying in two days is okay and then just watches it (laughs) and i love that that's hilarious dying in two days is okay (laughs) But uh, Norroy the Curse is a Japanese found footage pseudo documentary horror film. Yeah. Uh, and the the bare bones plot is basically we have this man, uh, Masafumi Kobayashi. Uh, he's like a director writer um, on sort of supernatural events uh, like mysterious murders, disappearances, strange noises, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and he begins working on this documentary called The Curse. Uh, and during his, I guess, creation of this documentary, his house mysteriously burns down, killing his wife, and he disappears. So this oh, document- does it does it say that at the beginning? I must have missed yeah. that. Oh, okay. yeah, it says it right at the beginning. Um, oh. So he never completed it. However, they have like the footage that he that he recorded. Oh yeah, um, which we learn how they get. I think towards the end of the movie, uh, but this one is weird because I I pretty like on the radar with like like Japanese horror of like the big ones, and this one popped up like last year, and I like really hadn't heard of it because it was released in two thousand five in Japan, right? It did mm-hmm. not get any other like release until twenty seventeen. Oh, wow. it was streaming to Canada. So like this movie was like really like you had to be in the know. And like right. I tried looking up. There's like not a lot of stuff for this movie. Um, and then in 2020, Shudder brought it to the US. 
uh, and it was a big thing. But there's still no DVD or Blu-ray release, which really? I think is a shame because I would absolutely love to own this movie. Um, yeah, and see like any extras or whatever. Yeah, that's a shame. That's a, that's a real shame. Not that's even in thing. like Japan or anything. There hasn't been a physical no, release. No, I, I well, no, just U.S. and U.S. and like Western. Oh, okay. Release there is, I'm sure, in Japan. But yeah. you know, you need like the region, whatever. Oh yeah. I mean, like I'm sure locked. if you get a region uh, free Blu-ray player, I guess you're good. But mm-hmm. you got to pay probably a lot to get it shipped. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, fortune. there's no convenient way for you to get this a hold of this. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like um like possession. I had to buy a a Korean version on uh, eBay. It's the only way you can get it. Oh, are you talking about the movie with Sam Neill and... Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I like that one. It's the o- only way you can get it. But, and it was funny because right after I, I figured out how to get it and I got it, uh, I think, I forgot who, but someone announced that they're doing like a Blu-ray like transfer. And I was like, oh, okay, oh. cool. <laughs> so, and it's going to get like a release out here. So I was like, okay. I would buy that. Uh, that I have my when I watched Korean, that, yeah, I could only find it on like yeah, you weird can only websites. find it. And similar enough, that's kind of I guess how this movie was. You could basically only watch it when somebody uploaded it up on YouTube or wherever. Oh, okay. Huh. That's one thing I've learned, um, especially with like Eastern movies, is if you want to find a like, say you're you want to watch a Japanese horror movie, kind of an obscure one. And you cannot find it anywhere to stream. Mm -hmm. Plug it into YouTube. Odds are there's a hero (laughs) out there that uploaded it in like probably 480p. (laughs) That's how um, Carolina has been telling me about this movie like for years when we were dating. About this movie called Goth. She's like, oh, you'd like this movie Goth. And I was like, okay, well, like, it sounds cool. It's about like basically like two isolated teenagers that are really into just like the macabre. You know, kind of like just like serial killers, bodies, stuff like that. Yeah. And then it turns out there is a serial killer working like in their city. (laughs) So they start to get like interested and investigate themselves. And I was like, that's cool. One day we just found, she's like, you cannot find this movie anywhere. Like no one knows about it. Uh, You can't get like a release anywhere. But then boom, we found it on YouTube one day. (laughs) And we watched it. It's weird how that stuff like that works. (laughs) But you got to be quick about it, though, because it gets taken down. Oh, I see. Because I watched um the first two guinea pigs, another Japanese horror movie, on YouTube, uh, which breaks all the rules and guidelines of YouTube, which is probably why it was taken <laughs> down. Because uh, that's basically just snow. <laughs> but um, you got to be quick. So when you see it, you got to watch it now before it gets taken off. Yeah, it's weird how YouTube works like that, like. Because, you yeah. know, you think of, like, I have this idea of old YouTube where, like, anything f- flew, basically. Like, you could, like, put, like, anything up there and it would stay up there for forever. Mm-hmm. But, like, now it's, like, you can find that stuff still, but it's just, like, it's always, like, you have to go search by, like, newest uploads. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. like, try to get it before it gets taken down. It's, like, it's that regimented now. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, so basically this movie really didn't have a a wide audience. Like, it had fans, uh, but just no one out here really knew about it. Um, Mm -hmm. So good job, Shudder. Thank you. (laughs) The only thing I like about Shudder is they they do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So I really liked this movie. I um, (laughs) No, this is one of those movies where... um, it's really rare for me to like watch a movie the first time and just like be right away like this is a five out of five you know this is a five bagger Mm -hmm. um and this is what it was for me okay this to me i absolutely loved every bit of it uh i want to watch it again uh now let me me (laughs) 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 oh I don't want to be an asshole. I it was no, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Okay. I I did not regret watching it. I I love the horror aspects of it. Like mm-hmm. that stuff was really su- successful to me. Um okay. Yeah, I think kind of where the 
not where it falls apart, but the stuff I didn't like was like, um, like the the mockumentary stuff and some of. So really, that you're not a fan of the style it went for. Well, I like storytelling wise. Yeah, I don't. I I don't mind mockumentary style. Like, I think you can do it. You just need to be like really smart about it. And I think that um, my issue with this is mostly that like. In order for me to get like actually scared by like a mockumentary type thing, it's like I have to like actually believe what I'm seeing, mm, right? Or like, and I felt like there was a lot of stuff in it that was like, um, it wasn't like true to the style. Like the acting wasn't like how I would think like an, an actual person would react to some things. Okay. Um. Yeah, and and then some some the way the movie is written a little bit too, especially in the the middle of it where it's like it's like very exposition heavy, um, mm-hmm. and it does like one of my least favorite things in any movie, any kind of movie. Like the most infamous example I can think of is um, whatever that movie with the Bagul guy. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Bagul. The Bagul. Yeah, the Bagul. What's okay, a Bagul? <laughs> wait, it's okay. Um, I don't remember what movie it is. It's one of those crappy ones from like the early 2010s. It's like Insidious or something like that, or or something. Oh, okay, sure. Con- Do you know what I'm like, talking about? No, but sure, go for it. Okay, talk about the Bagul. <laughs> but no, but in that movie, right? There's like all this build up, beef, like, and like you're like, oh my god, what is that Bagul thing, right? Yeah, and it it looks like a member of Slipknot. It's not that scary. They're trying too hard to make it scary. But anyway. You, oh, then then halfway you. through the movie, like the lady goes to like an expert, and then it's Vincent D'Onofrio on like a Zoom call, and, oh, and he just tells you all about it. Yeah, and he just tells tells the viewer all about. It. He's like, "Well, the bagul is this," and he's like, mm, "Oh, blah, blah. I and see." He, and he okay. explains it all like very matter of factly, and and this movie does that like a little bit too much as well, well. with the guy in the village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I, I like, I was starting to get really bored during that scene where they're watching that video, and like, he's just literally describing what's happening in the video, and I was like, okay, <laughs> you, well, how about we just watch it for ourselves, and then maybe afterwards you have this guy describe it, or, okay. or like, and then as well that one other guy, the he went to a different expert at one point in the movie who describes mm-hmm. the demon in this, um. And like he's like reading off of this, and he's like describing the demon's whole backstory, and I was like, oh, all right. But I like I didn't need all of that. That's just my personal preference. The less that I know about whatever is happening, the better, and the more I can figure out for myself, the better. So like, especially when it's okay. like trying to be like a horror movie where it's like, you, you know, like it, it's more scary to me if I don't really know what's going on, and maybe I'm not I'm not like being directly told everything. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. I mean, those are all valid opinions, but I'm going to mm-hmm. counterpoint you here. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I have Part A and B. <laughs> so A is my own personal preference here. Uh-huh. I, I am a huge fan of mysteries. I like um, getting little bits of information completely out of order yeah, and yeah, trying yeah. to piece that all together. So yeah. I was like having a blast as like our main character Kobayashi was doing the same. Mm. Um. So I I liked that like oh we have all this stuff let's go to this like like then they learned about this expert like once they have enough pieces to put together this then they're like okay we have this new information compiled of this who can we go with this so that's when you know they go to the expert and he explains this thing uh and your the my my second counterpoint to yours <laughs> okay <all right? laughs> It's a documentary. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but but the the point is to explain to us, you know, like because you have to think of it that Kobayashi put this all together. Yeah, you know. So, okay, yeah. I I no, I get it on a logic level. Yes, but like, but you're saying as a film. As as a film, to me, it's With not very scary if some guy just just points at a bunch of pieces of paper and I goes, understand. "This is this demon. This is what he does." Okay, uh, watch out. <laughs> watch out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? 
Like I, that, I, that's I, all that I mean. I yeah, get, well, I, I get, get it on a logic from. level. Like why, like logic level checks out. I get why a filmmaker would go to like experts and talk to them and mm-hmm. like, and have them show. I just, I just don't think it's very, it helps the movie scares at all for it okay. to just all be outright explained. on the table. Like I was, yeah, I was thinking of other like found footage or mockumentary type movies like Blair Witch. Yeah. Like that movie gives you nothing. No, like, yeah, literally nothing. Go, like, you just kind of get like all what the people in the town think it is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it's never outright explained. You're like find out you see like different things, weird mm-hmm. like stick people in the woods, and you're like, oh, what the heck does that mean? And you can kind of piece it together for yourself, I guess. That that's my personal preference for how and for for how, especially like found footage things, uh, how I prefer them to be made. But I can I think this was well made. I thought it was well written. Again, on a logic level, makes complete sense. But I just your personal preference, right? Yeah, I, I just don't think it's very scary to like okay. have like everything like so outright explained. Like I feel like there was there was too much like exposition and too much of going like. Okay, now we're going to go to this person, and then they're, they're going to immediately talk to me and tell me everything I need to know. This mm-hmm. random person that I don't know who they are. Right. Like, <laughs> that was like, but like, it really picks up near the end. I will, like, I really started to like the movie at the end, like when they go in, when they go on that boat mm-hmm. and oh, they're, yeah. they're in the, the middle of the scene. lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, so, that, from there on, I really liked it. The only thing I knew about this movie, because I saw a screenshot a long time ago, was that apparition they saw in the forest. And I was, since then, I was like, oh, I need to fucking the, watch you're this You're talking movie. about the one with the babies crawling all over? Yes, the oh, nightmare yeah. fuel. Yeah, that was really the, scary. <laughs> the visual that will never leave my mind. Right, yeah. Um, Which, which I want to go into, and it sounds like you're going to have a different opinion. Um. <laughs> But this, for me, was one of, I think, the scariest movies I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, this is very similar. It's hard not to compare this to Lake Mungo. Mm. Um, yeah, I was Lake thinking Mungo, of that a lot during this, too. I would say is another uh, one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> and they're both documentary style. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, like, found footage... All right, it's there's a lot of shitty found footage movies. Okay. <laughs> yes, because there it's the is. cheapest type of movie to make. <laughs> yeah. But what I feel like this and what Lake Mungo does really well is like unfiltering a lot of it. Um I mean, you look at movies like Cloverfield. What? You don't even see that fucking monster until like the very end, you know? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, everything's shaky everything's dark you can't see anything where where this movie especially like that final scene like you see everything in full and there's no like clear cutaways there's no um shaky camera there's nothing that can kind of like cover up like the horror or the visuals Mm -hmm. and it's just there and presented to you and i think like lake mungo does that very well and so does this film right where they're like, this is the scary thing. We caught it on camera and you're going to see it. <laughs> right, you know? yeah. It's not a teenager shaking the camera and you're looking at his feet running and going, oh, fuck, oh, shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which is almost every other found footage movie. Yeah, I was thinking, what is that one? It's like, there's like one in like an airport or some shit, right? Oh, um, quarantine. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that one sucks too. Yeah, you really don't see anything until, like, the very end. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, found footage, it's just, like, it when done well, it can be super terrifying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, did you happen to see Host? No, I've heard the, about that one, though. I heard that that, that one, one is was really good. pretty good, and it was pretty unique. And, of, unfortunately, after it, all these other Zoom horror movies came out. Oh, God. <laughs> but that one was actually, like... It, it it uses it very well. Like, it understands the platform it's using. Like, there's a part where um, uh, the girl turns on, like, a filter. It's like a face filter. Oh. And in the background, you see the face filter a pop on, like, something out of nowhere. You oh, know? That's creepy. So they do clever stuff like that. Okay. 
That sounds so, pretty and neat. I think found footage movies when they when they acknowledge this is a found footage movie. How can we work that in our favor? Mm-hmm. That's when that's what separates the good from the bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to use it to your, like um, to your advantage, and I think this movie and Lake Mungo do really really well. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, like Lake Mungo. Maybe we'll talk about it in its own thing eventually. But yes, we definitely will. Yeah. We we. We like both love that movie, and that's like, it's just. I remember watching it in the middle of the night, like yeah. the first time I ever watched it was like one. I watched it at night too. It was like at eleven I started it. Yeah, and there's that one part in the movie where like I legitimately could not sleep that night. Like no, yeah, um, <laughs> th- there, that visual, that same one you're talking about, is like ingrained in my mind. Right. Yeah, it's so terrifying. Ugh. It's rough. This one has a lot of that too. Like that, that all that forest stuff, mm-hmm. f- fucking spooky. Even just that, that like weird, um, like ritual scene they come upon with all the dead dogs and stuff. Yep. Where it's like it looks really like realistic. It doesn't linger too much on it. You get like mm-hmm. enough information just from what it shows of it. But like, yeah, right. I mean, just that is like creepy. That, yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, and like uh. Like the ending, the final sequence we'll talk about when we eventually, you know, do break down the plot. But um, mm-hmm. like I like that the camera is static the entire time. Oh yeah, like I mean, he like drops it, and that's how they get it static. Whatever you got to work with it, right. but like you just see it all playing out, <laughs> which is like really jarring. Right. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, I mean, for me, this is like one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. I think my girlfriend watching it with me would say it is the scariest movie she's ever seen because <laughs> uh, she couldn't, she was just freaking out. She did not want to be alone in a room by herself <laughs> after watching this. This might have oh, topped man. the Mulholland Drive dirty man scene, the winky really? scene. Oh my uh, God. Maybe. That's funny. I, I can't even talk about that movie without her getting scared. We can make a whole podcast episode just about that scene. Yeah, just <laughs> breaking down the winky scene in David Lynch's Mulholland yes. Drive. <laughs> uh, I can really talk about how cool that scene is and like how successful of a horror thing that is just in itself. Mulholland Drive is a horror movie, and I forget that every time I watch Mulholland Drive. It can, I feel that way about a lot of David Lynch's stuff. Where You'd like, say that about a lot, yeah. It's like existentially horrifying. I like, would argue that The Return could be a horror movie. Dude, yeah. Fire Walk With Me is under the horror category on HBO. I mean, I don't blame them for putting it there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, where would you put it under? I know, Family right? Family drama? <laughs> <laughs> there would be dads oh. and moms everywhere would be so confused when watching yeah, like, that. what the hell? I thought Imagine it was a family not movie. knowing anything about twin peaks and putting on fire walk with me oh have you ever seen um there's like this there's like some art theater that screened fire walk with me one time yeah and they like marketed it as like a like a cute high school like love story oh thing. my god yeah were they being like ironic about that like oh were they yeah aware? they were yeah okay. they were being ironic because i mean they but knew everyone who was worked. gonna come see that already knew what it was where yeah it's like but like the poster for it is so hilarious. It's like, it's like Laura Palmer like smiling, and like mm. it's like a bright like baby blue background behind her. Oh okay. Yeah, and it's like that. I don't remember what the tagline was, but it was like, she's got a secret, like something like that. <laughs> oh okay, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. I know. I have to send that image to you. It's it's hilarious. I was laughing so ever, hard when um... I saw that. Have you ever seen um, movie posters in Ghana? No, like I don't Ghana think so. Movie posters. Look up the Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me Ghana poster. It <laughs> oh, is God. wild. I'm pretty <laughs> sure like one of the characters has a machine gun for some reason. <laughs> it's awesome though. I it's love Bob. horror Bob movie the machine gun. Uh, posters from Ghana. It's like its own <laughs> aesthetic. Um, oh my God. So, but I was doing research on on this movie. I was like trying to find, you know, just like stuff about it, um, and I couldn't find a lot. But oddly enough, I found a Roblox game. 
What? Uh, based off of this. Yeah. Oh my god. Because I was just looking up like like Noroi the Curse into YouTube to see like um, maybe if there's like any like like behind the scenes stuff like that like making of interviews whatever. Couldn't find much, but I yeah I found someone like it was like a Roblox game called Noroi and I was or or I was like okay, no it was called Kagutaba that's what it was called, <laughs> and I was like I wonder if this is it or it's just a coincidence so I like watched the video and it's like this little kid it was like I mean. That's bad of me to assume this guy was a little kid, but there's no audio. It's Roblox, so I assume it's like someone in the like. Um But it was basically just like uh like he like spawned in front of this like shrine in a spooky forest. And I was like, okay, shrine, you know, it's just a Japanese horror, that's pretty common. Uh but then eventually got to the point he had to like make loops. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And eventually the final scare is Kagutaba does like grab you, and it is like the face from the movie. Oh, really? Oh, um, mm-hmm. that's so weird that that someone made it into a Roblox. I know <laughs> it's so bizarre. Yeah, and, like it wasn't bad either. Mm-hmm. Like it was pretty well made. It was just like a fun little ten minute kind of puzzle horror game. <laughs> that's cute. I have to look this up now. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> uh but uh yeah when we were i wanted to tell you this when we were watching it um because you know like we write notes like while we watch some of these movies that we know we're going to talk about so we can like remember things Mm -hmm. um and me and me and carolina were writing down um we basically looked like insane people because (laughs) we were writing down stuff so i had written down at one point it was face pigeons man's voice aluminum dogs loops psychics and we just had all these arrows going around <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so we were having a blast with it. And then by the end, we like made a diagram like of it all figured out. Oh, my God. Which so I'll you guys were literally that end. Charlie Kelly meme. Yeah. Of him we were with that. Like on, that, on that cork board yeah. with all the papers pinned. <laughs> It's got all this mail for a Kagutaba. <laughs> Turns out Kagutaba doesn't exist. <laughs> so No, yeah, we were, we were having a blast. And I get I just love like I love mysteries like this, you know? Yeah. I the full disclosure, I do like mysteries like this. I just think you, you could have told the story in a different way, and that would have been more interesting for me personally. Th- that's, that's fair. Yeah, so I don't mind That's it being fair. a mystery at all. That's I'm completely okay with that. Obviously, I love Twin Peaks, and that whole thing will be a mystery forever, probably. But like, yeah, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was um, from what I've gathered from people, like other people reviewing, it seems like this is a movie that you're either going to be a big fan of, or you're gonna think it's really boring. <laughs> so I think that you became like the the middle liar. I did, yeah, somehow. I don't want to um, be lumped in with those dumb people that, like, because, like, I know there's dumb people that would watch this and be like, what the hell, nothing, nothing happened. Happens. That's just so boring. I, I had a friend that told me the w- they didn't finish The Witch because it was boring and nothing happened. Oh, my God. And I was like, I'm like, there's a baby getting ground up in the first five minutes. What do you mean nothing happens? <laughs> yeah, literally. You know? And you're watching this family unravel. Like, how is that not interesting? Yeah. No. Uh, that's why you need to unfriend that guy unfriend him just send it send him a text he's like you've been unfriended i'll send him a posted for the uh poster for the unfriended be like that's you buddy (laughs) you're unfriended (laughs) got him (laughs) got him (laughs) um so before i go in into um sounding like an insane person covered in tinfoil (laughs) i break down the plot um overall i i i safely say i love this movie Mm -hmm. i i recommend to anyone especially if you're a fan of japanese horror um i think it's a great found footage movie i think it's one of the better found footage well maybe some of the best found footage movies out there i realize the bar is really low (laughs) with found footage um and you watch it on shutter uh if you got Mm -hmm. shutter that's really i think the only place to watch it yeah that's Uh, what i saw too is the only place I think you so, might be able to find it on YouTube, but I mean that's about probably. it. Probably, I know when I was looking researching um, 
for this episode literally you look up like noroi and the first thing that like people search for is full movie <laughs> really <laughs> yeah so it's probably people that have been wanting to watch it oh my god that's great so all right are we ready uh to get into the plot yeah um, let's do it spoilers ahead so i kind of had to write this i wrote like an outline here a bit interesting not so much in um the order that things happen but i think the order that they make sense in <laughs> okay because because it is kind of like you get this movie gives you pieces of information right right and I, it doesn't really come together until like the end mm -hmm. so probably the first like hour of this movie you're just like how the fuck is any of this related <laughs> <laughs> like all those japanese variety shows yeah uh like there's like three different ones oh um, yeah and I, I love japanese variety shows dude like <laughs> honestly it's like the funniest shit ever <laughs> like look up, i gotta show you the dudes like, you know you know the mtv silent library show oh i don't think so oh it's basically it was on mtv um and it's basically uh like you're they're in a library they all have like there's usually six of them they have cards and they shuffle them and you get a card and it's usually like one person gets like a skull which means they're like up for like a punishment mm -hmm. and they have to like do something but like they have to do it so none of them like go over like a certain decibel from like laughing or like in pain or whatever so oh. it'll be stuff like you get like slingshotted in the nuts right mm -hmm. so or it's like something like silly where you have to like like pie someone with a mayonnaise pie or something stupid like that um and like not laugh or else they lose the money right but but that was big here but it was actually like originally this like comic group that had like a variety show in japan and they do they basically like invented that where like they have a whole bit where they basically like go in like set scenarios and the goal is like they can't laugh or else they get like spanked <laughs> that's like the punishment i love it <laughs> but but my favorite one my favorite one it is the funniest shit ever they're like um they're at like a sushi restaurant and uh the guy like the waiter's like oh how's your sushi and the guy's like oh it's like really good and the the guy's like oh do you want to like you know tell the chef how good the sushi is and the guy's like sure and he's like okay i'll get the chef and they the chef comes out and it is just like the biggest black dude ever like okay. like terry cruz like level <laughs> like like muscular oh he's muscular and it's funny because like in japan like that's really rare mm -hmm. and also to be a sushi chef you know <laughs> and so they're already like laughing and then the dude goes up to him and the guy just asks he's like oh what's uh like what fish is this and he just goes i don't know <laughs> and he literally just asks question every answer just i don't know <laughs> it's it's like the funniest thing ever but oh my god yeah variety shows are amazing they, so I've, I've i've seen i've seen clips only from one where i don't have a lot of i don't have a lot of experience with japanese variety shows but i don't remember what it was called but it was hilarious it was like one where it's like they just like give kids a shopping list and they just put them like in a grocery store and tell them to oh, go get all the groceries yeah yeah, they just like give them adult tasks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like Those people awesome. like commenting over it while it's happening. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it looks fun. One of my favorites, they get like these idol groups, mm -hmm. and they just get them to do like crazy stuff. Like there was one where they had like a pipe, like a see-through pipe, and inside was like a cockroach, and they had to blow the cockroach oh, into no. like the other person's mouth. Oh god, it's shit like that. It's <laughs> awesome damn that sounds horrible but i could awesome. go on for hours about all the variety shows i love but um <laughs> basically so our our film starts with kobayashi who's uh i guess a paranormal investigator and writer and filmmaker mm -hmm. yeah and he's first called to a woman who says she always hears babies crying next door despite um like the family not next door not having babies um, but like a young boy. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like, okay, you know, I'm going to go check it out. And he, he goes to the neighbor and she just yells at him. Uh, and he's like, okay, whatever. I guess, you know, we can't continue this lead. But on their way out, they see like a kid in the window. 
<laughs> and there's also a bunch of dead pigeons. Um, so they they take the audio they got to a sound guy, and the sound guy's the real MVP. They they, they give this man a lot of business, and he does oh a pretty God. good job. Yeah, right. I was thinking that um, during this. And but he's able to like filter out the audio, so, and he's like, you can hear like it's like a newborn crying, mm-hmm. but there's like at least like five of them. <laughs> So that's kind of like our first little bit of knowledge we get. That kind of like sets up the mystery, you know? Yeah, that, then, that's a it's a spooky sound too, where it, yeah. it almost sounds like a cat like yowling at first. Yeah, but it's it like that's like not a quite a cat. And then like you listen to it further and you're like, oh my god, yeah, that is like a baby crying. But like well, weird. He explains and... it where like it ends, I think, with an inhale. And oh, that's how yeah. like a baby newborns cry. Right. So that's why it kind of like it cuts short. So that's why it kind of sounds like a cat. Yeah, that makes sense. And then uh, this is when we start to get into like the variety shows where there's one where they I guess they gathered psychic children. <laughs> and basically the guy um, draws a very specific shape on a paper, puts it in like a black tube. They can't see the paper. The kids just have to feel the the tube it's in and then draw it. And this one girl kept drawing like every shape perfectly until the last one, she drew a little face. <laughs> and and the face looks like, uh, have you ever seen um, Princess Mononoke? Oh, um, but it, is that the Studio Ghibli? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that before. You know, the little tree spirits, those little like white dudes with like the black eyes and their head shape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It looked just like that. So that's what I thought this movie was going to be about. I was like, oh, that's going to be about tree spirits? Right. No. Nothing is, <laughs> nothing, nothing that fun. I didn't even um, make that connection, but you're so right. They, they totally look very similar. Yeah. But then finally, uh, like in the variety show, the last test was to conjure water. Uh, and so she has a, like a, a flask, and she's able to just create water with her mind in it. But inside, she also created a hair. And they take that to a lab, and it turns out it's like an infant's hair. Uh, it's like an infant mammal is how they say. They don't know if it's like human or not, but it's definitely from like something that's a baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then shortly after, this girl goes missing. And that's kind of, I think, what kicks off the plot. Because Kobayashi's like, okay, I got to find this girl. <laughs> Like, I know weird shit's going on around her, so it's something paranormal. Uh, That's where, um, then we're introduced to another variety show um, with our actress, uh, Marika. And one thing that's actually interesting, I found out that all the actors in here actually played themselves. So, I guess if you're Japanese and you know the actors, um, I guess that adds some realism to it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. So, so she's literally playing like a version of herself or something. Yeah, like she's herself. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That that adds something to it. Yeah, and I guess some of the other characters were as well. Like they were just playing themselves. Oh. Like I guess probably the variety show people. Yeah. So they were trying to do like a Blair Witch thing, where like Mm -hmm. trying to get people to be like, "Oh, this could be real." Right. Believe it. So, um, yeah, we, we see this variety show, um, where basically their thing is, let's just go into the spooky forest. Uh, and, uh, Marika, uh, our character, she hears voices and she collapses and screams. And when they play back the footage, you see like a, like a boy, like a ghost boy in the background. Mm-hmm. Kind of your typical found footage, spooky stuff. Um, yeah but then they uh they go to interview her after this event and they bring a psychic named hori who is a man covered in tinfoil head to toe (laughs) and he tries to i don't know if he tries like he tries to strangle her kind of like he jumps at her and he goes on about um uh how ectoplasmic worms are coming for her (laughs) <laughs> yes uh, yeah <laughs> so kobayashi's like okay i think we need to like see like what this guy knows um because he sensed something 
So they go and his entire home is covered in like tin foil and he's like doing these drawings all over and it basically they um he says something about Kana which they were like what like we didn't really tell you anything how does he know about this and he's like I got to find Kana I got to find Kana and he draws them a map <laughs> which leads them to this apartment uh who is owned by a man named Osawa and they uh, kind of like i guess watch him from the balcony and there's all these pigeons on his balcony <laughs> so he already has a connection between that guy and then that other woman um from the beginning with the boy and we later learn that uh that woman also lived next to this guy so there was a connection there and th- that woman's name is uh ishi yeah ishi yoki something like that ishi Naki? something like that <laughs> yeah all right so then this there's you're, so you're much going like, for your your cork board of information right now yeah i'm actually i'm moving around the the little bulletin things with all the <laughs> red string i hope that picks up on the mic so the people can hear that <laughs> yeah you hear my thumbtacks going in and out you hear me frantically <laughs> scribbling <laughs> I hope this makes sense to people who have never seen this or else <laughs> it's just going to me be going on and on about ectoplasmic worms. You're doing a good job. I'm fine okay. so far. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So <laughs> Marika, our actor, um, she contacts Kobayashi because she says she's waking up in the night making loops out of yarn. So they're like, okay, let's set up a camera and film you and see what you do. All right. So uh, Marika, just as she said before, wakes up. Uh, and this time she unplugs like a cord from like her light in her room and once again ties it into knots Uh, so they're like what the fuck that's weird and they're trying to find the connection with the knots and so they take that footage to again our sound guy and he isolates it and he hears um, a voice a man's voice say kagutaba (laughs) So this is when they sort of trying to find out like what Kagutaba is. And I guess um, like the literal um, translation is tool of chaos. Uh, So they bring it, they connect it to this village and they bring it to kind of like an expert uh, in the supernatural and uh, one of my favorite parts about this movie is this village because it sounds super cool where it's basically just a village of wizards and they <laughs> I, I wouldn't say accidentally but they basically summoned this guy Kagutaba you know how wizards are they're just like can we do this they just casually summon demons yeah they just casually summoned a demon well I mean I don't know if they casually did it because they sacrificed like a bunch of baby monkeys um <laughs> But they summon this demon. Things got a little crazy considering his name is Tool of Chaos. Uh, and <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So they basically, to appease him, they, they perform this ritual that involves a priest, a medium, and then the demon himself. And essentially the, the ritual is the priest will communicate uh, through the medium. In this case, it turns out we find out that the daughter of this priest was Ishii, the woman with the boy. So the basically it goes, they, they, they talk, they cut a rope, he does one bow, four claps, and another bow. And that like appeases him for the year. Like he kind of chills out. Uh, however, on the last ritual they did, uh, something went wrong and his daughter like seized up, very similar to how um, Marika did in the forest during that variety show uh and then unfortunately the town was destroyed by the government to build the dam so basically the last ritual kind of got flubbed up and then (laughs) the town got destroyed and no one could do the ritual again (laughs) so they're like shit uh that means that this ritual needs to be complete um, so they do more information to Ishii, thinking like, oh, hey, maybe we can get her to, you know, finish the ritual. Uh, and she lives up in this town now. And everyone in this town, I guess, is somewhat of like kind of supernatural minded. They all have dogs 
Because mm-hmm. I guess dogs scare away the demons. Yeah, and they're all really she... cute dogs too. Yeah, yeah. Lots a bunch of Shiba of dogs. Inus. The guy yeah. loves Shiba Inus. It's like the the Japanese poster dog. Yeah, <laughs> that's Doge. That's Doge coin. <laughs> that is the Doge. <laughs> that is the Doge. <laughs> but uh, so once again, they knock on her door. Her house is covered in loops, and she sends them away again. So they're like, okay, well, you know, she's not going to be able to reason with her. Uh, So they're like, fuck it. We're going to do the ritual ourselves. So um, also I failed to mention at this point, Marika is almost in like possessed mode where she's kind of weird. She's kind of off. She randomly has like these seizures, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So Kobayashi's like, let's do it. So he gets rope. Uh, they get a uh, Hori to come along um, because he is connected to this as well. He can sense whatever this is. Uh, and they go to the dam. They basically boat out to where the river or where the ritual site would have been. And they do the ritual. They cut the rope. He does a bow, four claps and a bow. Uh, and suddenly Marika is like, okay. But almost in like a suspicious way, you know? Yeah, yeah. She, something was off immediately with her. Yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. You know, <laughs> like, I feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, it, she, what she says, she feels lighter or something like yeah, that. Yeah, she feels lighter. <laughs> um, it's like, now, right. this is when the movie, I think, cranks it up. Yeah. Uh, this is what, like, a lot of the buildup leads to, because now Hori freaks out. And he's telling him, like, get out of the water, get out of the water. They get out of the water and Hori runs into the forest. Uh, and Kobayashi takes a camera and he's like, I'm, I'm going with him. You guys go back to the car. So Kobayashi follows Hori. They run into this forest. They go deeper and deeper and they start seeing all these dead dogs. And they all seem like they have like their throat cut and some of them are like gutted. Uh, and it all leads to this uh, shrine. And then this is when Hori points out and he keeps saying Kana, Kana, Kana. And the camera turns and you get some pure nightmare fuel. <laughs> and it's like basically um, a like ghost of Kana with a bunch of fetuses crawling up on her. And it's it's one of those things that doesn't sound that scary, but when you see it, there's yeah, just... It's- it's the way it's, it's executed. It's like very off. Yeah, is that supposed to be Kana that's like having the yeah, babies crawl? Yeah, I think her? it is. Oh wow, it's a child. Yeah, definitely a a, a f- female child. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, while this is going on, uh, Marika freaks out, runs out of the car. Cameraman follows into the forest, and she kind of like writhes around on the ground, uh, freaking out, and then she's fine. She's cool. <laughs> um, so this is when Kobayashi is like, fuck this. We're breaking into Ishii's house and I'm getting answers. Uh, they do that. Uh, her entire house is covered in dead pigeons, dead dogs, and loops everywhere. So they realize, okay, she's the one that killed all the dogs. Uh, they go upstairs to find Ishii has hung herself. Uh, and they have like this shrine as well and behind the shrine uh is her the son of ishii or the boy uh over kana's body uh they realize um kana is not alive she's cold so they take the boy they report it to the police um and kobayashi making probably the worst decision of his life decides that he's going to adopt this boy (laughs) uh after they find out he's not even ishii's biological son yeah that's so weird so that's never really explained i don't know where she gets it um (laughs) unless um well they i forgot to mention that ishii her background she worked in a nursing school that performed illegal abortions so it was like i don't know what the term is but it's basically like once the fetus has formed i guess in japan it's illegal and i think even here depending on the state yeah it's illegal yeah i think um, yeah it could be like i don't remember what 
what weak market it is. But yeah, even in the U.S., at, at a certain point, it's it's illegal to do. Yeah, so it's like basically well after that. Um, and she was accused of stealing the fetuses because they would go missing. Um, so maybe, I mean, this is kind of far-fetched. She raised one of the fetuses into this boy. <laughs> or, I mean, that, that's very possible. Or this boy also has psychic powers like Kana and she took him. Oh. It could be that too. Yeah. Um, which I'll get in once I kind of break down my thought on everything that happened. Mm -hmm. But they adopt the boy. Um, and they're able to find a scroll of the first ritual. And basically they used a medium uh, and they fed him ba baby monkeys to summon Kagutaba. Um, and this is when kind of like the documentary does those like, what happened after, you know? <laughs> um, and yeah. Hori is placed in a mental institution, uh, but he escaped, it said. Uh, and then Kobayashi's house mysteriously burns down, killing his wife. Right. That's when you think the movie's over. But turns out the studio that Kobayashi worked for was mailed a tape, which I assume was this documentary um, and this extra footage we get at the end. Uh, but it's, it was addressed from him, but he's still missing. And what's on the tape is um, it's Kobayashi's house uh, and Hori arrives at the door and he's like in like the asylum, like I guess whatever that's called, you know, hospital clothes. And he grabs a rock and comes inside and he just straight up attacks the boy and bashes his head in like over and over. Yeah. <laughs> it's executed really well. Um, but this is the part that really fucked me up, which was one of the scarier moments in the movie is he's bashing the boy's head in, and then he just stops. Right. Mm hmm. Hori just stops and stands up and the boy gets up and his face it's all it's it's supposed to be Kagutaba. Like the mask of Kagutaba is kind of like those tree spirits from Princess Mononoke, where like one they're two really big eyes, one kind of is up, one kind of is like lower on the face and like a little mouth. Mm -hmm. But it's like the boy's face is all bloody, but it makes that it almost looks like like almost like you know when it's after someone's beaten up and like their face swells, <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> so yeah, it looked really creepy. Yeah, and he just stands up and stands there. <laughs> and then behind him is Kana's ghost. Uh, and Hori just kind of grabs the boy's hand and they walk out. Uh, and then that's when Kobayashi's like in complete shock. The wife, who I guess is under, under Kagutaba's control, goes into the next room, pours gasoline on herself, and lights the fire. And we see her burning alive and it's spreading throughout the house. And it ends with just saying Kobayashi's still missing. <laughs> and and there's no credits, which I kind of love when movies do. Yeah, it just ends, right? Yeah, it just ends. Because it's kind of like, oh, I like that because it adds a little, like, feels like you didn't just watch a movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you watched something maybe you shouldn't have. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot to process. There's lots of pieces. Um, it is, yeah. So if you don't mind... Um, I'm going to go in to what me and Carolina came up with, uh, plot wise of what happened. Okay. And kind of, I think the future of what happened to Kobayashi and where he is. Yeah. So we know to do this ritual to appease Kagutaba, you need the priest, the medium and Kagutaba and the priest communicates through the medium, right? Right. So... Ishii, the daughter, the priest, who was the medium, I believe became the new priest, right? Um, To appease Kagutaba. She needed a child of or someone of psychic um, power to speak. So she got Kana or was st could be stealing multiple kids in order to find the right one. But in this case, Kana fit the bill. She was able to do it. Mm hmm. And basically, 
she was feeding Kana all of these fetuses, similar to the baby monkeys, right? Right. So she was feeding this child these fetuses and embryos uh, in order to appease Kagutaba. However, what I think is up for speculation is whether or not she was under Kagutaba's control or she was doing it against Kagutaba. Or possibly to summon him again. Oh. I think it could be to summon him again because remember in that ritual it went bad and she was semi-possessed yeah um and essentially the boy acted as kind of the vessel for kagutaba to enter right that was my interpretation um so when ishii either depending on how you see she saw that her job was done so she hung herself or maybe if she was under kagutaba's spell she had a moment of clarity and was able to end her life you know Mm -hmm. stopping this or maybe kind of died something went wrong she hung herself right right um but in the end so we know the kagutaba is the boy essentially uh whether or not kagutaba is in full control of the boy or he's just in him is fine hori comes hori knows because he's super psychic but because he's institution he lost his um tinfoil his aluminum meaning that he's more susceptible to the ghosts or whatever it is um and that's why he stops bashing the kid's head in because kagutaba is able to get him under his control so we have kagutaba and we have um hori and then we have kobayashi in the end kind of like our last survivors right right so kagutaba and hori go off to do whatever the fuck kagutaba wants to do because he's a demon of chaos okay but I believe, or we believe, that Kobayashi is essentially the new priest. Uh, and he is going to find his medium, and he is going to appease to end this, like, end Kagutaba. Okay. That's kind of how we read into it, is why he disappeared. Yeah. And why he sent the tape, so people are aware. Oh, I see. Because if you go, oh, I'm going to go try to appease this demon people are gonna think you're crazy right right so i'm guessing he's gonna spend the rest of his life going after this demon trying to do the ritual successfully and appease it hopefully not stealing children and feeding them embryos (laughs) Um, hopefully he finds a better way about it right uh but i essentially that's what i think it is okay i didn't think i didn't think that much about it so but that that would make sense. That would make a ton of sense. What what you just said like makes like total sense. So I was wondering cool. why like, or why they they emphasize so hard that he disappeared, like that he didn't end up mm-hmm. dead or whatever. Yeah, because so. they didn't find his remains. Right. Yeah. And he was the one that sent in the footage. Yeah, yeah. It even said it was from him, right? Even in the in the thing. So. So it could be like a warning, you know mm-hmm um but yeah so uh noroi 2 we have kobayashi <laughs> who's trying to hunt down the demon oh god yeah <laughs> no right to yeah, shutter Norway original no right to shutter original no right to um <laughs> yeah i mean this movie as you can tell i'm very passionate about it i i really love this one i mm-hmm. This is a this is a certified classic, <laughs> right here. This, no, this I agree. Gets... The, listening to you talk about it makes me like it even even more. So okay, I'm glad I convinced you. Yeah, I like that explanation you gave because that makes a lot more sense. Because I was just kind of like puzzled by the ending. You were so, just kind of rolling with it. Yeah, and I was like. And yeah, I mean, I think the movie overall explains too much of what's going on, but mm. like, I yeah, now, now that you explained it that way, I, just, I do. Yeah, there is some more ambiguity in it than I than I previously thought. Yeah, like there with, was with his character like, and like how the whole um, ritual works, really. Yeah, with like Ishi and the boy and Kana, like that was all really ambiguous. Yeah, as to what Ishi was actually doing, because it's very mm-hmm. unclear 
Um, and that's the one thing I'm the most unclear on is if she was doing it of her own like fruition or if she was under the control of Kagutaba. Yeah. I, um, I assumed she was under the control of Kagutaba, but it could go either way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's she, like, I mean, she was clearly insane to some degree. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, she could have been that way just of all the awful shit she's been doing in her life mm-hmm. in order to make this happen, you know? Right. So, and I think maybe the suicide after she did the ritual, she's like, I'm done. But what was she su- summoning him? I mean, yeah, I guess. Okay, now I'm kind of under the the. I'm on team that she's somewhat under his control. Yeah, I would say so. Because maybe, maybe giving him like a vessel, right? Yeah, to be more powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I always, I always, I interpreted her suicide as a moment of clarity, or yeah, she just feels so guilty about what she did. You know, she was able to break control and kind of end it. Right, or maybe she needed to commit suicide to allow kagu taba to possess another well, being you also have to remember something i didn't really um add in my outline but remember the uh that asawa guy who was neighbors to ishii in that apartment building who was grabbing the pigeons also ended up hanging himself as well oh and there was a yeah. lot of other hangings connected to her right and oh, uh the neighbor of um armarika who got possessed hung herself as well Mm -hmm. so it seems like people around kagutaba like once kagutaba was done with them they would get they would hang themselves right so and we don't really know what she wanted with them really right or no we don't yeah that's a mystery that's interesting to think about yeah so that's where i um was getting real into this one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and i'm glad i'm glad i convinced you <laughs> oh yeah there's definitely some it. more i mean I, I there are still things i didn't like i want to mention the, about the, the ending of it where yes. the part one this house starts burning down i was like so frustrated that he didn't just put down the camera <laughs> <laughs> well the camera was like well yeah he did grab the camera at the end but for the most part the camera was on the ground well no even, even when even when his son is being beat in oh, his yeah, head true. with a rock he was still holding the camera and only using one hand to try to get hey. the guy off of him hey you know what he knows what's good content <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah i guess i, I guess he does <laughs> that, that was the you part that enough? frustrated me and early, earlier in the movie too where it's like the one the tinfoil guy ori when yeah. he, he like starts like the he starts like assaulting the um main guy the director guy Oh, and, yeah. it, and the camera guy's just like standing there filming it happening and i was like dude put down and the camera and help him out <laughs> it's hollywood <laughs> you know yeah stuff like that made me think of like you know what maybe if this is a more conventional movie i could um i would like it better because like i, I, I feel you. like they didn't like i mean early on they really were taking the fun footage stuff to like the nth degree like they should with like Showing like mm. those variety shows and like the talk show and like that was all really cool. And I thought that was like that was like something you don't usually see in like yeah, the found like footage. Taking other movie. pieces of media. Right. And yeah. Fitting it in. Especially something like a variety show or a talk show. I can't think right. of any other mockumentary that has done that where it's like you recreate something like that. Mm-hmm. That that's really unique. Um yeah, but I mean, just other things like that. They're like little things that don't. I mean, really it just matter, goes to show how hard making a good, like, found footage horror movie is. Right. Yeah. It's so hard to keep it like truly realistic. Yeah, it's it's it really is. Only few have made it really work, and like Blair Witch is one of them. I think we both really like that yeah. one. Yeah, Blair um, Witch is good. Yeah, and that one is just that like is like. The way that's executed is literally just one camera, three teenagers in a fucking forest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, there's not really much you could go wrong with that. <clears throat> yeah, but like, but again, it stays so ambiguous. And it, like, why mm-hmm. the Blair Witch sequels suck is because it loses <laughs> the ambiguity. 
you know right yeah it's like oh it's a creature okay yeah that's so lame god i hated that new blair witch movie they made a few years ago yeah that movie's garbage have you seen that i um saw the ending oh okay but i i was not interested it was just on tv yeah i mean i i i was already like noped out of the movie in like the first like 10 minutes or whatever because mm-hmm. they they show the ending to the first movie, right? But yeah. then they add in a scary monster noise. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, they so they added it into the footage of the first movie? Yeah, like the first movie. It was like the end of the first movie with that guy in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it's at the part when that camera gets knocked out of her hand. You hear her like screaming, and like they mm-hmm. added a monster noise in during that part. And it's like, oh come on, really? Are we really uh... that stupid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> what you tell me you didn't hear the monster noise when you first saw it uh no i there was no monster noise i think that would make everything a little less ambiguous Wait, you're telling me you watched the first movie and you didn't think it was a monster oh my god don't don't gaslight me into thinking there wasn't a monster <laughs> noise <laughs> you're telling me that you watched the first blair witch movie and you didn't think it was one big troll <laughs> one big goblin man one big green man <laughs> People think that movie is about aliens. People think Twin Peaks is about aliens. The co-writer of Twin Peaks thinks it's about aliens. Yeah, so, unfortunately. Uh, people think a lot of dumb things. Everything Aliens aren't scary. I'm no, sorry, uh, but... They can be. I don't know. For me, I believe in aliens more than I do in ghosts. Yeah, I, for, that's, I, I agree me, with you. When aliens are done right, they can be scary. Like stuff like Arrival that takes an actual look at like realistically what would happen if aliens just made contact. Mm-hmm. That shit's scary. And they're annihilation um, too. Annihilation is yeah, is horrifying. Yeah, but um, just little green men running around. Eh. <laughs> we'll have to see how Jordan Peele handles that subject matter True. in his smash hit film. Nope, coming out in July. Get ready for out. the podcast about that. The the aliens are not really aliens. It was us the whole time. Oh my god. We're alienating each other. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> what if it was like that? We're like you re- like the reveal in the movie is that the aliens that are like invading and like killing or attacking people in the movie were there on Earth first and we kick them out. Oh my god. They're they're the indigenous people. I know. I was trying to think of what angle he could go with that would be like about like social politics and like stuff like that. And that's the only and one I can think of. <laughs> they attack on Columbus Day. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can write movies. We write a movie every episode. Oh, and it, you, know? you could you could make one of the characters like Native American. Yeah. Or have some Native American and that she's the only one the aliens don't attack. Yeah. <laughs> They kill everyone else. Yeah. They're like, and then the aliens are like, they raise their fists. They're like, we stand in solidarity with your people. <laughs> that would be so horrible. That's I, awesome. I, 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 I hope you doesn't do anything like that. That's going to be what um Halloween ends is about. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude, I'm excited just to watch that just to get it over with like yeah don't you love it now that um franchises are just i can't wait for the last movie to come out so i don't have to watch more of these (laughs) that's the way i felt about star wars (laughs) yes i I was only excited for the episode nine just to get it over with like a band-aid just rip it off i'm not i I wasn't even emotionally invested before but i'm now ready just not be invested at all (laughs) just to be over with i'd feel like you don't have to watch it (laughs) yeah i i have not watched a piece of star wars media since oh wow you've you've held pretty strong i yeah you know what helps i don't give a shit (laughs) oh mandalorian takes off his helmet and you're mad about it cool i don't give a shit (laughs) Oh, there's um, colorful bikes in uh, Boba Fett show. Oh, Boba Fett, yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. I don't know if you've seen clips from that. That's no, like I haven't. That's like some Spy Kid shit. No, I, I, I'd rather watch a Spy Kid show. 
probably yeah i mean i'd rather watch a spy kids thing than watch boba fett again i'll agree with you on that (laughs) (laughs) spy kids 3 was the original avengers and i'm not going to elaborate anymore dude they should have gotten robert rodriguez to uh, direct the avengers first Avengers didn't movie. um didn't he direct um an episode or two of the boba fett show yeah he he directed a bunch of you know i think he was yeah. he was the most consistent director on that show which is probably why it sucked <laughs> Aww, why you gotta be mean? <laughs> not to be mean but <laughs> all right well now that we've had our mandatory uh star wars rant um, <laughs> per episode uh, i think it's a good time to end it uh you can watch Norway on Shutter. Um I highly recommend it. Um it's it's great. Uh it's super scary. I think it's a good movie to watch uh late at night. Uh turn off all the lights. Uh get get super immersed. Yeah. Uh cuz it's a real it's a really spooky time and you'll probably see things that'll never leave your mind like I yeah, did. Get ready for some nightmare fuel. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.